Hi, all. For this month's re-release, we're really excited to bring you an episode all the way back from October of 2019. Remember that, guys? Remember that <laughs> that year? That year was 20 years ago. 20, <laughs> 19 years ago. So the episode that we're bringing to you is on theme with Botox because the thing we're talking about is the number one defender against photo aging and wrinkles. That's right. You guessed it. It's salted butter. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's sunscreen. You should be wearing it every day. And if you're curious while you're putting it on every day to protect your skin, this episode is all about the chemistry behind how it does so. So it's very related and it's super cool. And if you hadn't heard it, then you definitely should listen to it. And then next week, we'll be back with a brand spanking new chemistry lesson episode for you guys. One that I'm excited about. For a change. For a change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Happy listening. Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm GM. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast that helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Jim, you didn't point at chemistry this time. I actually pointed under the table. Uh. I was trying to be a little more discreet. <laughs> so. Okay, today we're going to talk about sunscreen. Whoa. <laughs> sunscreen, okay. Sunscreen. Like, like how it works kind of thing? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. What did you think we were going to talk about? Like whether you should or should not eat it. This isn't your other podcast <laughs> jam. We don't just talk about stuff. We just speculate. <laughs> yeah. It is so funny how different these podcasts are. <laughs> we're going to talk about how sunscreen works. Okay. What the different types of it are. Mm hmm And then you're going to tell it back to me. Okay. Deal. Okay. So, memory jog. Test time. Okay. Hopefully you get an A. Do you remember the electromagnetic spectrum? I do. I, well, I don't remember like all of it because we didn't really do that. But mm -hmm. the idea of it is that um, waves have different frequencies mm -hmm. and some of those frequencies fall within visible light. Mm -hmm. What we can see because it is waves like bouncing off of stuff, mm -hmm. which is how we see. Yeah. And there are, there's all kinds of waves mm -hmm. because there's also microwaves, which is what powers microwaves. Mm -hmm. And then we talked a little bit about other kinds of waves that we don't see, um, like microwaves and UV rays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't really go much for the outside of that like there's little, radio waves too oh yeah radio waves um infrared there's lots of other waves and if we were doing this podcast about 20 years ago you guys would be hearing us through radio waves instead of uh through the internet so oh yeah yeah here's a question i have okay what is the internet this is a tangent. We don't have to talk about it, but isn't it weird? Mm -hmm. Are there waves that are in the air getting the internet Wi-Fi to my computer? Yeah, That's they, more what I'm wondering about. They use frequencies, yeah. Yeah, they do. It is waves? Mm -hmm. There are waves getting my computer that are internet? I'm pretty sure. I don't know anything. I don't understand Wi-Fi at all, and I sometimes believe I never will. It took me a long time to even understand what the internet was. I think it is because they started with radio. This is such a... I know it really is. I don't. I don't have much to We're say about it. We're probably gonna so have to cut this out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have much to say, so it doesn't even doesn't even have to go very long. But I started with radio, and that was mm -hmm. like we were we got first we got the like uh, Morse code thing, figured out how to get that across mm -hmm. to people, and then we started figuring out, oh, let's do some voices. That'd be a little more complex. Let's do it, and that was waves. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting images too, images and sound. Started doing TV like that, and then we yeah, started I don't know doing how TV works either. Now that I think you about know, it, internet. Is uh, it's all like this this level of like escalating what the wave can do kind of thing? Yeah, blows my mind. Okay, but I have no idea how it works either. So <laughs> that's all I got. Great. Well, okay. So that your explanation of the electromagnetic spectrum before we diverted was great. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is a good idea. I just say it's the basically collection of waves okay. that we have that we've categorized according to frequency and sort of their characteristics. Mm -hmm. So we've categorized those waves in different things. Now, the light that comes from the sun, there's um, an abundance 
there's the visible light, but mm-hmm. also the sun gives off ultraviolet light. Right. And I'm sure most people have heard of ultraviolet or UV rays from mm-hmm. the sun. Those are actually a type of wave. So it's energy coming out from the sun in ultraviolet. Okay. And we talked about how maybe the mantra strip can actually see the ultraviolet. Oh, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. From the radio. So episode. ultraviolet is just outside the visible region. Right. It's just barely not visible to us. Yeah. Same thing with infrared, but on the other side of the visible region. Uh, so it's basically like extra red, but we can't see it. And extra violet, but we can't see it. That's so weird to me, <laughs> that's too. That's how we named has, it. Yeah, that actually has like a mm-hmm. color name to it. It's kind of interesting. So ultraviolet waves that come from the sun, however, can be damaging to your skin. Okay. We've heard about that. Yep. Yeah. That still kind of blows my mind because it is like, it's just light though, but you know. But that doesn't mean it's safe. Right. I think it's just Mm -hmm. that like the idea of, so it's just outside of the visible range. Mm -hmm. So the idea of like, what if I walked into a room that had a light bulb on and it was like, hurting me you know what yes I mean? so yeah. there we have uv lamps that we use in the lab uh-huh. and if you look directly into them you could burn your eyeballs wow so they're okay dang so, so it can even be in a light bulb you've created a little miniature sun mm-hmm. in a lab well it doesn't usually let out visible light it usually is only uv so it uh, only lets out uv it's almost like a black light a black light may be similar but weaker or something i'm not sure exactly how black lights work but yeah. we have a uv light so that we can see something known as UV active compounds, but that is another, I mean, it's related here, but this is another story for another day. A little too complicated than I'm willing to go today. Okay. So do you have an idea of maybe knowing that UV is a wave and what you learned about waves and microwaves, what sunscreen could possibly be doing? Hmm. I want the listeners at home also to be thinking. See if they can come up with something. What could sunscreen be doing? Mm-hmm. My thought is that it'd have to like, in some way, like some people call it sunblock instead of instead of sunscreen. Mm-hmm. Um, but it sounds like rather than block, because not these waves are just going to go nowhere. Maybe it'd have to like bounce them or like reflect them somewhere else because it kind of seems like that'd be beyond our control. Like we couldn't just be like, nope, you're gone, done. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Is that right? Yes. I think this is the first time you've ever gotten an almost perfect answer. Whoa. (laughs) Okay, so. I mean, my Spider-Man one, to be fair. That was really close, but you didn't know about dispersion (laughs) forces. Yeah, I didn't. That's true. Yeah, they didn't go into that in the movie. It's so weird. (laughs) (laughs) So weird that they didn't talk about dispersion forces in Spider-Man. I mean, it's such riveting information. (laughs) So that's what it's doing. It's, It's like... Bouncing the waves well, in some way? that's one way. So there's oh, okay. two different types of of approaches that sunblock or sunscreen has. Okay. Very similar to what we talked about with microwaves, mm-hmm. the inorganic compounds, like metals reflect microwaves, can also just reflect and divert away Oh yeah. those waves. I didn't think about how, that's what that was happening with microwaves. Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. make the connection, but duh. So if you haven't listened to the microwave episode, go back and look. Yeah. So basically the waves came in, come in and hit something that is impenetrable to them mm-hmm. and it reflects them away. That's pretty crazy. How, how is a cream impenetrable to them? It like, has inorganic compounds in it. So you're okay. basically spreading around. I think the major compound used in that is called titanium dioxide, Okay. which is basically an inorganic compound with titanium and two oxygen. Mm-hmm. And it actually is white. And that's oh, interesting. why we've got the sun blocking sunscreen yeah. here. Huh. Mm-hmm. So that's one way that sunscreen works. Okay. It's, it's doing exactly what you said. It's taking in those waves and blocking them, keeping them like Captain America's shield oh yeah nice okay yeah yeah yeah. they hit it and it just goes off of it like yes exactly okay so that's one type the other type Mm -hmm. is this is a fun one and we are definitely going to talk about this again when we talk about solar panels okay the other type has organic compounds this is the kind i already knew about before Uh i started researching or 
because I'm an organic chemist. Uh-huh. It has organic chemist. <laughs> it has organic chemist. It has or- <laughs> up organic chemist. You have little teeny yeah. organic chemists <laughs> on your skin. Um, it has organic compounds in it, uh-huh. which happen to, just like water happens to absorb microwaves mm-hmm. and dispels that energy as heat. Mm-hmm. It has so this sunscreen has organic compounds in the sunscreen yeah. that absorb the UV waves and just dispel that energy as heat. Whoa. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. That really is. I'm like, it, it seems like it'd be so unstoppable. Like the idea of bouncing, it seems like, okay, I can, mm-hmm. I can get that. Uh-huh. The idea of like being like, it absorbs that and makes it harmless. Oh my just gosh. releases it as heat. That's really cool. So is one of them like, the more classic way, like, do we know how to do the bouncing, um, reflecting kind of thing before we knew how to absorb? Before you answer your question, I just want to say, I think that this is amazing. I, I completely <laughs> agree. I'm like, I, I didn't believe that I mean, like my answer at the beginning kind of shows that, like, I didn't believe that you could just disperse mm-hmm. or like transform those waves. I thought you had right. to just release, redirect it kind of like a bullet coming at you. Like one of the best ways really Truly, the, one mm-hmm. of the best ways to be to have something that's going to make it ricochet off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, but then that's dangerous because it, for in the case of a bullet, it could ricochet and hit someone right. else. Right. But, I was thinking like like that level of danger mm-hmm. when it's like it's coming at you, it's coming fast. Mm-hmm. Don't try anything like mm-hmm. don't try to catch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. But this way, it's almost as if it turns the bullet into something harmless like water. That'd be pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. If only all the bullets could be turned to water. Seriously. So uh, to answer your question. I'm not sure which one came first. Uh-huh. I would have to look in a little bit further, which I did not do. Yeah. But I, I, are, I already knew about the absorption ones. Mm-hmm. I did not know about the titanium dioxide ones because I spend more of my life in the organic realm than the general chemistry realm. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So I can't answer that. But isn't that so cool? Yeah, that's awesome. That is crazy. Um, do you have any other questions about it? We are like, what's the more common sunscreen that most of us have, have dealt with? Which method do you think it is used? I don't actually know the answer to that question, but let me do some quick re- research and see what I can find. Okay. Okay, so after some research, I did not find which one was most common, Mm -hmm. but I did find that sunscreen, according to the American Academy of Dermatology, sunscreen is regulated by the FDA. Okay. And it seems that at this time, all the sunscreen that's legally sold in the United States is regulated and should be safe. Okay. So I don't know which one is most common. There's not a lot of information on that, but it does seem... That it's all safe. Okay. So it said the most common ones are the ones that have titanium dioxide and zinc oxide? No, that said the ones that are safe. Most generally recognized as safe and effective. Have that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're like the blocking kind. So those would be the refracting kind. Yeah, but then it says that two other ingredients that are not safe are some chemical ones, but not those aren't the only chemical options. Yeah, okay, got it. So even though we don't know which one's the most common, I can't find any reliable source that tells me that at this time. Yeah. I could maybe just pull up a bunch of nutrition labels. Do they have, the, what are those called? Chemical labels on uh-huh. the back and see, but that information does not appear to be readily available to me. But if okay. there is someone who knows, please let me know. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And a little aside... Some sunscreen is not good for the environment. Mm. So if we have any biologists out there listening, please write in and tell us what you know about which sunscreens are safe for the environment. Yeah. Because we'd like to give a little PSA about that. Yeah. Okay. So before I, I do want to say one more thing, but before I do that, do you have any more questions about sunscreen and how it works? So it's basically like, not really a question. I, I, I think I do want to check to make sure I'm understanding. But okay. we can do that at the time we remember to do yeah, that. <laughs> let me tell, yeah, let me tell you this one more thing. So there are the UV range is broken mm-hmm. up into UVA and UVB. Okay. Um, the UVB range is the one that is most likely dangerous for the majority of burns, skin cancer, tanning, that's all UVB. Okay. 
UVA is likely less harmful, Mm -hmm. is not as dangerous. The most dangerous is UVC. Mm -hmm. That is absorbed by the ozone. So we're protected from UVC by the ozone. That's good. That is good. Thank you for the ozone. Yeah, thanks, ozone. Appreciate you. (laughs) So you may have heard broad broad range sunscreen Mm -hmm. and then non-broad range sunscreen. So our broad spectrum sunscreen. Uh So that just means the broad spectrum protects against UVA and UVB. So in case there's any little bit of danger from the UVA, you're also protected from that broad range sunscreen. Okay, got it. So I did want to address that. I also wanted to say SPF stands for sun protection factor. I actually knew that. You did? Mm -hmm. Wow. I only knew that because I think it's one of those things that I like to know what acronyms are if I interact with them a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those that's kind of cool to know because then everybody says SPF all the time and everybody knows like a little bit of like, oh, I'm looking for SPF, whatever. But they don't really know what they're actually Mm -hmm. asking because it's like, it's just like not knowing what a dollar is, you know? Yeah. I want $10. And it's like, well, what's a dollar? It's mm-hmm. like, well, do you know how they calculate SPF? No, I don't know that at all. So I you just, just learned what, what it was without learning what it really was. Yeah, I just wanted to know what the acronym meant. So, well, I'll say this. SPF uh-huh. is the amount of sun that is allowed through. So say you have a hundred percent of sun hitting your skin. If you have SPF 15, that means one fifteenth of that sun is it able to get through your skin. If you have SPF 30, it's 130th. SPF 100, it's 1 100th. So it's the lo- it's the bottom part of the fraction, basically. Mm-hmm. 1 yes. 15th, 1 30th, 1 50th, or whatever. Yes. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did also want to say there could be some, even though it might not be dangerous for sunburn and sunscreen, for UVA can cause some skin aging, like okay. wrinkles and making your skin look more long-term damaged rather than tanning and burning and cancer. It would just be aging and wrinkles. So, so it's useful to have broad, broad range sunscreen. sunscreen. Only if you believe there's something wrong with wrinkles, which there is not. (laughs) Jim has really good ideas about beauty and what makes someone beautiful, but also damage to your skin isn't great. So sunscreen is probably Mm -hmm. good broad range, even, even not to, protect against wrinkles but just yep. invisible damage that you can't see right yeah, away definitely take care of yourself definitely take care of your skin okay so that's it okay that is how sunscreen works okay i think i get it okay ready i'm ready so just like we talked about in microwaves mm-hmm. when you put metal in a microwave mm-hmm. it does not like it's not like affected by the waves in the same way mm-hmm. it bounces them off mm-hmm and so it's like, you're not getting in here waves, mm-hmm. right? I'm a fork. You can't mess with me. <laughs> so what we're doing when we right, put on... I'm a fork. <laughs> <laughs> come at me. Um, so what we're doing when we put on sunscreen is we're putting on a cream mm-hmm. made up of... Not, not exactly, but basically made up of a lot of little pieces of metal or most commonly titanium dioxide. Yeah, which is a salt. It's a metal a compound. Okay. Yeah, it's a metal plus a non-metal, so it's likely an ionic compound or a salt. I'm the benefit pretty being sure. that it has this, it retains that same ability to not to to reflect the yes. UV. Mm-hmm. The waves just like we see when it does that with microwaves. Yes. So, um It's not exactly the same, but it's very very similar. Right. We don't want our skin sparking like that would not right. be good. But yes. the idea that it can be not affected by mm-hmm. the waves. And so we're spreading this basically that this super thin layer of metal <laughs> all over our bodies. Of a metal compound. Metal compound salt. It sounds pretty cool to say it's a thin layer of metal. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Metal compound salt thing or whatever. And when we do that, especially if we do it the right way and we do it mm-hmm. thoroughly, then it re flex or bounces off all the UV That's um, right. and keeps it from damaging our skin, especially mm-hmm. if it's broad spectrum, then it means it will help to bounce off all kinds, all, all the types right. of UV mm-hmm. that could hurt us, which is like, that's 
crazy. And I'm sure there's a lot more at mm-hmm. the, at, below the surface to like talk about there or something like that. If we wanted to get like crazy into the weeds. Yeah. You but could it, talk about like Johnson, why they absorb what they absorb, but that's yeah. very in depth. I didn't learn that till yeah. much, much later on. In, and, and it's already simple enough just to relate it to like, Hey, you know how this works in a microwave? Mm-hmm. Imagine it kind of doing the same thing on your skin. Right. It's like, Oh yeah, that's great. And thankful that, that we have yeah things like that. Um, well, you only explained one type of sunscreen though. What's the other kind? The other kind absorbs the, um, UV mm-hmm. waves, correct? Mm-hmm. And like transforms them. Yes. You said into heat, right? Yeah. Basically it absorbs them and then the molecules have added energy yeah. in that releases as heat yeah basically the Which, like, if molecules you're, are excited that's pretty much heat and if you're out in the sun trying to not get sunburn you're already around heat anyways so you probably like wouldn't even really notice oh, it oh yeah so that's pretty crazy mm-hmm. that that can actually transform the waves and like yeah. render them like un- disarm them basically amazing yeah so man that's crazy and that's it that's how sunscreen works did i get it you got it. You got it perfectly right. And I think that this is a really fun one and it's pretty easy to understand. Yeah. And it's so amazing to me that people figured this out and thought through it. Yeah. Something I saw the other day on, on the internet was it was like a question on Reddit and it asked like, what's something that if it was called something else, people might actually take it seriously. And somebody said, what if a sunburn was instead called like radiation damage or something like that. They had a few different uh, yeah. words. Radiation poisoning. Yeah. Something like that. Some or a few different words pre-cancer. to cancer. Yeah. <laughs> to describe what it is instead of just sunburn. Cause it mm-hmm. kind of sounds a little bit like, Oh yeah. I just got a little burn. Like yeah. just like touching a hot stove. You're like, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, it'll go away. But the idea of talking about like, if you called it something that gave a little more weight to its actual uh, potential effect, right. How people might take it more seriously. So yeah. I've been thinking about that ever since I read that. So it's kind of cool to learn about this now. Yay, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you found it enjoyable and beneficial and it fit in with what you're doing Yeah. already. Well, and on that note of things making us happy, Mm -hmm. what has made you happy this week? So yeah, something that's made me really happy is last week I got to see my um, niece again, my only niece on my side of the family, Mm -hmm. Um, my brother's daughter, and um, which was such a nice thing. I wasn't sure I was going to get to see her again, so I saw her like uh, the week after she was born. Yeah. And then now it's been, I think two months almost exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just so great to get to be around her again. I got to hold her way more. Um, and she's just doing a lot more like she's a little more active now. She's got a little bit more active facial expressions yeah. and moving her hands and stuff. Babies change so fast. Yeah, they really do. And it's like more personality coming out. And I know right, right now it's like, I think everybody wants to say that or whatever, because they're just like enthralled by the cuteness of a baby. But it definitely seems like there's starting to be a level of personality. Um, yeah, showing up. I love that. And she's such an easy baby too. Like, like I haven't had I've been around a ton of babies, but mm-hmm. um, she's definitely easier than a lot of babies I've been around at this age. Yeah, in my opinion, that's nice. And I haven't had to do some of the hard stuff. Obviously, like I'm not like yeah. the one who had to wake up to tend to her. But or when she's she won't say that for a little while, but you don't know what she'll be like when she's teething right. or anything like that. Yeah. So that was really great. We f- we figured out this um, position that she likes to be in. If she ever gets upset, she likes to be, I forget what they call it, but p- kind of put upside down and you you have um, one of your arms under her mm-hmm. and like your kind of elbows kind of going between her legs. And so you're fully supporting her and your other arm is kind of holding her her head and your elbow. Um, she likes that position a lot. And she also weird. needs to see. She loves to be able to see. So oh, she, yeah, she yeah. gets upset if she's not able to like see around because she just wants to look Mm -hmm. around and but she also likes that position for some reason i think because it feels kind of like she's not being held she's independent yeah she's like kind of hovering out there she's fully Mm -hmm. secure but she doesn't feel like she's being like this like it's crazy that bunched up that babies have preferences like that yeah there are babies who like every baby i've ever been around has Uh liked to be held one way or another way Yeah. yeah and so it's just interesting that they have preferences that quickly. Well, my mom said that that's like one that she uses with us babies. When like us when we were kids and when mm-hmm. she's had friends and stuff like that. So she kind of uses it as like a secret weapon. Like, nice. oh, this, this baby's upset. Try this way. I like that. I like hearing about babies. So what about you? What made you happy this week? Um, This week, I, well, 
I feel like I talk about hockey a lot, but part of why <laughs> I like it so much is because I get to share it with people that I love. It, mm-hmm. It's something I really enjoy just being in the atmosphere and the environment. I like that it's cold. I like the sounds. There's just a reason I like the sport as a whole, but mm-hmm. I also like doing it because I can share it with people I love. Uh-huh. I think that's something about sports. It just brings people together and my whole life. It's done that for me and my dad. Oh, cool. Which I really, that's been something, no matter how our relationship has been, it's always been so easy and fun to share hockey with him. Yeah. And even when I was a very little kid, he took me to my first game. Uh-huh. This past week, hockey season started. Mm-hmm. So I got to go with my dad to this um, big event yeah. before the season opener where the players were there. And that was really cool. And then I got to go with him to opening night. And so mm-hmm. just getting to spend that much time with my dad, he's recovering from a surgery. So he would be kind of bored and at home anyway. So it's yeah. a fun way for him to get out and do something fun. And yeah. I'm just so excited that it's hockey season and that I get to spend so much time with my dad because of it. That's awesome. Did your other siblings take to hockey as much as you did? Or is that kind of a unique to you and your dad thing? That has been unique to my dad, to me and my dad. Mostly my brother Uh is starting to be interested because I taught him how to get the games. (laughs) (laughs) When I get excited about something, I talk about it enough that people around me naturally will jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. They either have to jump on the bandwagon or they have to form some level of an opinion. It's like, (laughs) okay, I'm either going to join this thing or decide (laughs) that I'm not going to and why. Or they just have to, not care that I talk about it constantly, yeah. which yeah. I can think of a few of our friends that take that opinion. I actually been to a minor league hockey game when I was a kid. Jam. I had, just hadn't told you this because I thought you might <laughs> think there's too much hope there for me to like sports, but Jam, you do like sports, by the way. You like bowling the Abilene, and the Abilene Aviators. I can still remember their logo. They don't exist anymore. Pretty oh, sure. That's sad. But they, I went to a game, maybe even more than one, um, when I was a kid, and I just remember. Uh, it being cold and that experience like that, but I love um, it being cold. That's one of my, that's one of the reasons I like the sport so much. And on that note, thanks Dallas stars for giving me a fun place to share time with my dad. And thanks all of you for listening. And thanks Harmony for being so darn cute. Thanks Harmony. Oh, before we leave, I do want to give my references. My references this week are, these are going to be probably repeated a lot, but the 11th edition of the Solomon organic chemistry textbook Mm -hmm. the chemistry textbook available on OpenStax, Mm -hmm. and the major authors for that are flowers theopold langley and robinson and we used wikipedia with the references on wikipedia for facts on spf and we use the american academy of dermatology faq page And we'll always put these things in our show notes so you can actually see a a breakdown of what we referenced and, um, and you could do some further reading on that if you'd like to. I also want to, yeah, absolutely do further research or if you have any questions, feel free to write them in. Yeah. I also like to just do a quick check on our listeners around the world. Uh And I want to give a shout out to a few countries who have had significant jumps in the last week or so. Okay. That would be the UK. Probably because of our Great British Baking episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a big jump of 50 listeners mm-hmm. in Canada. Still going strong, Canada. Nice. So we Thanks, had a Canada. jump. Thanks, Canada. A jump of almost 30 listeners. Nice. And we had more than double Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. They doubled their listenership, more than doubled their listenership in Saudi Arabia, and a big jump by about 20 listeners in Germany. Nice. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks. So that's been fun to watch our worldwide reach grow yeah. and hopefully you guys are sharing it with your friends and that's so fun and exciting to watch so it sounds like they have chemistry in those other countries also <laughs> like it works there too which is pretty chemistry cool chemistry works all over the world man that's crazy and the periodic table is in the same language all over the world ah i think there might be some exceptions to that but none that i'm aware of off the top of my head interesting it's weird mm-hmm. but crazy but makes sense it, mm-hmm. it makes sense that it should be the same <laughs> yeah. like everybody should agree the symbols on one. are the same yeah all over the world yeah Well, Melissa and I have a lot of ideas for topics of chemistry in everyday life, but we want to hear from you. So if you have questions or ideas, you can reach out to us on Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F-O-R, Your Life, to share your thoughts and ideas. 
And if you enjoy this podcast, you can subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And if you really like it, you can write a review on Apple Podcasts that help us to be able to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Kiwasong and A. Collini, who reviewed this episode.